Hi, it's Charlene Lee. My industry is in the research space. So I'm a researcher. My role is as an analyst and we write research reports and do advisory, consulting, and a lot of speaking. And my most interesting project I have right now is I'm about to go launch a cohort-based course on how to lead change in the disruptive era. As the world has been shrinking, it's been going through the pandemic, uh, we've seen disruptions in the supply chain. So disruption and change is at the forefront of much of the work that we're doing now in global supply chains. So I picked this topic because it's a question of not only how do we survive with disruption, but how do we thrive with it? How do we look at disruption and all of these changes as an opportunity to create change, positive change and positive growth? The ones who were best prepared to manage disruptions had contingency plans and also had a really clear idea and a connection to not only their current customers, but also their future customers. And the reason why that was so key is that when you are focused on the future, you're not 100% sure what's going to happen. So you have the ability to shift your focus very, very quickly. You have this resilience inside of the organization to be able to sense and understand how the markets could change. So when the markets changed incredibly quickly, literally in the space of days. The best prepared companies were able to sense and understand how things were shifting and to make the changes, to look closer, to get alternative solutions in place, to have those connections already in place just in case something dramatic or disruptive was going to happen. I think the best way to think about this is that it's a different mindset. Instead of thinking about disruption as something that happens to you, or even trying to find disruptive technologies or innovations that can then drive growth, disruption actually recognizes something different. It's almost backwards. It's understanding that growth creates disruption. And the idea is that as you get closer and closer to that growth edge, making those changes to grow exponentially, you're realizing suddenly this is going to be incredibly hard. This is going to be difficult. We're going to have to change everything that we do. And that's just too much. So we back away from that growth edge. And what I want to talk about is how do you focus on that future, on that future customer, so that you can really establish a clear vision that will carry you through those hard days to overcome all of those obstacles and be able to see their way through this huge transformation and really succeed at it. So many companies use the pandemic and the disruption and all the chaos and change as an opportunity to literally catch up, leapfrog, to make all of these changes. And our research is showing that they felt they went through the biggest changes over the past two years. But what's interesting is they anticipate they will go through even more changes, go through even more disruption over the next two years. And the reason being is they believe that so much of the changes that they made already in the past two years was the foundation to be able to accelerate into changes going forward. So agile is a foundational aspect of this. There's different ways to be agile. This is one methodology, but the idea is I'm not going to be fixed. I'm going to be able to think about all the changes that come along the way and be able to respond to them in real time. And I also will take smaller bits and steps in order to figure out what's the right path forward. It's a rethinking completely thinking of what it means to be successful and also what it means to fail. The idea of failure, the shame, the expectations, the disappointments that are associated with that go away. And it becomes a data point to say, what's the gap between where we are today and where we want to be tomorrow? The technology and, and especially automation tries to take into account all the things that the advances that we are making and to say, how do we actually codify that with technology into our process, but not so much that we can't change it also. And automation, especially with artificial intelligence and machine learning, allows us to look at all the options out there to identify and sense when something is changing in the environment. It can do that so much better than we as humans because it can ingest a huge amount of data, be able to run scenarios, understand and give you options to, that you can then decide what to do. And that would normally have been just impossible to do just with humans looking at data uh, to be able to understand how the environment is changing.
my new initiative is looking at how do we scale the work that I do around helping leaders become better change leaders, better disruptive leaders. And one of the things I wanted to do beyond just doing the speaking and the workshops that I have is to scale it with courses, both on demand and in cohort based courses. And in a very disruptive way, I think one of the, the interesting things to do now is because we are so comfortable doing things remotely, we can actually create cohorts of people from all around the world. And it could be hundreds, even thousands of people studying together, learning and actually practicing leadership practices and mindsets and frameworks, and then applying them into work and coming back the next day and learning from each other again. I think the best learning happens from doing and also the best teachers are ourselves and the people who are going through the same journey.